Okay. Everybody, uh, this is Brett. Welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And I want to say hi to everybody. A lot of people here. Jim, Alex, KS, uh, GDJ, Todd, Malti, Linda, Ick, Linda Dick, uh, Karis. A lot of you guys here today. So welcome. If I missed you, apologies. Big uh, week in the markets, of course. We're going to dive in, unpack some news. And just as I was forecasting, I had a nice pump on Monday and now we're selling off, uh, not unexpected at all. Some uh, concerns there about a triple top, we'll get into that. Although I have my suspicions that, um, you know, the market typically does what uh, causes max pain and fools most people. So do we rock it higher straight to 100K? Possibly, what do you think? Or do we pull back? Well, let's unpack this and dive into some news. Certainly, we'll look at the charts of Bitcoin. Nice clean chart here. Push right up. Did touch a new high of 69,000, a little bit higher, just briefly, just briefly on Bitcoin. And uh, we can see that here on this uh, four hour chart on Coinbase anyway. You know, it just got right up in this zone here, this uh, prior high. Let me clean up that chart a little bit and go full screen for you guys. But uh, you guys already know this if you're here. Kind of a messy chart. Let's uh, do this real quick for uh, the the uh, longer term just to kind of see. You've got to move a few things out of the way. Go to a weekly chart and don't need the Bollinger Bands. Lots of things going on on these charts here. So uh, bear with me. And of course, let's see uh, this shows exactly what i'm talking about here triple top triple top you guys don't like to see that um we um you know a little bit concerning if i could get this trend line here to work right there i've got an alert already there so look uh, we push right up here triple top on a weekly time frame so here's the thing you guys know i've said uh that typically breakouts happen on the third or the fifth attempt well, the third attempt has now in the process of failing. Let's see how the weekly candle closes. And, um, you know, certainly still in a bullish move higher. But, uh, you know, big question is, do we see a pullback? And I think some of a pullback is warranted here. And, um, but, you know, got to be very leery of what's going on with the markets and the market makers and uh, the games that are played at these key inflection points. So certainly uh, we will be watching our indicators and uh, this is the Crypto Mastery class. So we're going to be looking really closely at our indicators. And as a quick reminder, you know, the ERI, the early reversal indicator, did call the exact top back here to the week. And also these inflection points here and down here. And then on the bullish side, uh, back in here on the weekly chart in September, we had a nice green bullish ERI. And of course, we had a big uh, monthly ERI back right here at the market cycle bottom. Was one of the few people that called the bottom and to get back in. And of course, that's based on these indicators. So if you're not already using them, go over to uh, Crypto Mastery. Uh, dot org and uh, you can pick those up or learn about our m3 active trader class which is like this we go into a little more detail look at uh, total market cap etc and dxy all of that fun stuff so um this is a primarily a training on the indicators so also look at some news and give you guys some ideas what's going on in the markets so let me jump back to the weekly chart and if you guys have any questions uh, i will pull up the chat here hit my hotkeys and uh where did that thing go and right there so i don't see any questions um, big question of the day, obviously, is what happens here? Do we uh, go lower or higher? And I think that um, I have to be careful what I say here because a couple things. It's conflicting. We have triple top here, likely would pull back. We have a big order block here, our ERI Pro, which we're about to release this Friday. And so uh, keep an eye out if you're not on our email list already. Just go over to uh, moonstream.io and you can uh, sign up for that and get our weekly newsletter, by the way, which is excellent. Um, my Irene put that out yesterday, some really good articles, and you can kind of get on there here at Free Crypto Newsletter and sign up for these classes here on Tuesday at Moonstream.io. So um, with that, uh, where were we? I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, you know what's going on. Big kind of pullback here today, down 4,000. So, you know, yesterday, here's what I've been saying, and I think was the case, is that uh, the shorts were loading up up here, and there's a pretty famous YouTuber, Gareth Soloway, uh, as was talking about his shorts, how he was averaging in at 54,000, 56,000, 60,000. And uh, there's a video going around the internet uh, that he has him saying, we'll see if I get wrecked. Well, the big speculation is, did he get wrecked? And my... Um, 
suggestion is that probably uh, if he was trading any kind of leverage. And so uh, what tends to happen at these key inflection points, this was an exhaustion move designed to liquidate the shorts and flip everybody long. And now what are they doing? They're liquidating those longs. Uh, we do have a chart here I can pull up and we can look at that. I bookmarked it last week, kind of showing where the uh, long and short liquidations are. So let me pull that up for you guys and we'll take a look because uh, this is uh, pretty much real time. And here we go. So in terms of the last hour, uh, we see well, 42 billion in long liquidations, uh, 24 hours. Of, this is what I want to show you. Sure enough. So we have $737 million wrecked. That's very much like we saw, like we saw a couple of weeks ago on uh, the ETF approval. And um, actually, uh, there was more recently a big up and down day where we saw massive liquidations. It was right in here, I think. But um, let's take, let's focus on now and zoom in on that. Let's see, where did that thing go? Right here. So if we go to 24 hours, this is the real-time liquidations and on coin glass here. So over in this right-hand corner, 24 hour wrecked. So on the long side, 444 million people or dollars rather getting wrecked. And a lot of that was from today because of course we are pulling back sharply. And a lot of people FOMO'd in yesterday, all new, new all time highs. Um, guys, you gotta know this is the, what happens uh, at these key inflection points and be careful, especially on Mondays, and uh, so the narrative still is that the ETFs are pouring money into these markets. You know, we can see that on the iShares, but look at this, the iShares on the two hour also pulling back for the first time in quite a while. And so we were watching that all the way back. If I go to a 12 hour, you know, you can see I had this line right around $25 on the BlackRock iBit ETF. And as soon as we broke above that, that was where I was saying, hey, look, this is looking really strong. Time to get in. And we had this massive rally bounce off of the 21 period EMA right there on the iBit shot up in the sky. And, uh, you know, you guys that are familiar with the rocket indicator. Uh, no, this was almost a rocket here. Let's see if I have this on this chart. Uh, I don't. And that is another thing you can get access to in our pro pack, which is coming up here, that rocket on the launch pad. I don't see any by uh, the, uh, as the eyeball goes, but uh, it's technically this was almost a rocket. It didn't close toward the top of the candle. We'll take a look at some other ones here shortly. But uh, the other thing that's interesting here on our indicators is that we had this bag of money sell signal. Those of you familiar with the trend indicator know that uh, that is where we take profits. So I'll open this up. And this is one of our longer term trend indicators. So it's kind of like Mario Brothers. You know, you see, expect to see Mario running out, grabbing all the coins. The key is the sign that there's a new trend forming. The bell is your buy signal. And typically we're already in the trade from our other three indicators. So if you're new here, we're going to unpack that a little bit. And so um, now this is a 12 hour chart. So it's uh, typically we use it on a daily and weekly but because of the short time frame and the IBIT, I'm going to use this 12 hour, which signaled a sell signal, a take profits signal two days ago on Sunday. Well, you know, we had a little bit of push higher yesterday and we're getting a new bell here, but uh, we are seeing this sell off and the early reversal indicator also giving us a uh, bearish signal on the oscillator. So it tends to trigger a little early. This red vertical line showing us this is a early reversal indicator that this market, the ETF at least going to pull down a bit, probably down to this region, I would say, on the uh, 21 period EMA. So um, with that in mind, I would look for some further consolidation in this area. And a profit taking, you know, the big question again is uh, when, how big of a pro uh, pullback do we see? And uh, on our radar, our multi time frame radar, uh, this I'm probably covering it because the uh, the way the the screen layout there it is. You can see it now. Uh, it's going to be right above my head here. This thing, uh, this this all red radar. This is a multi time frame radar. We developed this for catching market top and inflection points. So let me go to a daily and uh, see so our early reversal indicator not quite there on a daily however all red on the radar uh, is bearish and also what we see as a bullish sorry bearish uh bear i'm so used to saying bullish everybody uh, i have to retrain my mouth to say bearish it's been fun it's been a while bearish engulfing candle on the blackrock etf and a big topping tail so this tells me we're going lower everybody and if blackrock is seeing funds outflowing then that means bitcoin's going to be coming down 
So a little bit early to be making these kind of blanket statements, but uh, this has certainly been propping up the market. So, um, you know, here's a trading view example of when we saw this happen. And I did this study on the iBit. So all the way back here at 25, like I mentioned, and if we hit play, you know, this is uh, this is what's happened since. So we'll unpack this a little bit more. I um, want to get to some news, but I wanted to give you the big overall what I see. And look at this chart here. Guys, I've had this on here for feels like months. Uh, what time period is this? Let me just open this up here so you guys can see it. And especially on we're doing these, put the, putting these clips up on YouTube here. And I want to get the action over on this right hand side so you guys can see it. But look, triple top up in this region on the weekly time frame. You know, he did push above it and touched a new high. I had a question mark there. I've had it up there for a while. And uh, I still believe this pullback is going to happen. Now, it, it's we have already tested the, the golden pocket on the way up, um, pulled back and pushed up through it. So that golden pocket is no longer really relevant. Um, the the pullback is really what we're concerned about. And, um, you know, it's uh, I was saying 45. I just it's so hard to tell on this weekly time frame. If we drift down into this zone, maybe 50,000 is the bottom. Here's the point. We're not going to be tied to any numbers. This is where our indicators shine when the markets start to turn on even shorter time frames, if you're day trading, it works very well there. I was using this very well uh, shorting uh, last year and 2022, um, very manipulated market. So I don't do a lot of uh, day trading anymore, uh, almost none. Swing trading, that is our advantage on a daily time frame, weekly time frame, and monthly time frame. So here's what, well, let's do this real quick because I haven't done this yet. So now that we've put in a new low high, the Fibonacci we should draw now from the low to the high like this, and I got to load up my uh, different settings here because I've got a number of different settings. So we'll go down to the FIB uh, default profit target, well, FIB defaults here. Yeah, so this is what I would expect, you know, typically 50% retracement at least. So that would take us down around 43,000, which is this congestion zone there. And if we really want to get fancy, I'm not sure that we do, but we can pull up the uh, fixed volume, the essentially the VWAP, and see where all of the, the majority of the you know, volume was, this would suggest coming down to 21,000. I don't think that's reasonable. And so let's just open it up here. And that's really from the last market cycle high. If we were to do it from the low to the high here, and this is where you kind of are, you know, having trouble, you're looking for drawing lines in the sand to fit your narrative. So I want to be really careful with that. Um, but um, let's see, let's get rid of that VWAP and the Fibonacci just got, uh, I got moved out of the way. So let me redraw that. For those of you that uh, aren't familiar with the Fibonacci's, most of you are, you know, uh, it certainly has its, you know, some of it is kind of self-fulfilling, but let's just take a look at this. A 50% retracement would take us back down to 42.3 and a 6.618 uh, would take us back down to 36,000. All right, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, really no way to tell. I do think this ETF money is going to keep it strong. Bigger concern is the bank term funding program ending March 11th, and that's a week away, you guys. So um, there's many reasons why this is pulling back. Also touched on our upper Bollinger Band, you know, our modified Bollinger Band. Those of you in the M3 Active Trader, you guys know how we do that. And you can see on crypto, we don't use standard settings for your Bollinger Bands, we use the modified settings because it controls, um, it, uh, controls is the wrong word, but uh, it respects that upper boundary very, very well. And whenever it gets above the upper modified Bollinger Band, we call it the 3BB, it, it invariably pulls back. Okay, so we are in a pullback zone. I took, I sold most of my crypto Sunday and yesterday, took profits. I have one, I moved some into a new project that um, we'll be talking about maybe putting a buy alert out in uh, Retire Rich Inner Circle and for our M3 Active Trader. Uh, if you'd like to find out more about those, again, moonstream.io, you can learn about these indicators here or our Moonstream Active Trader class and our Retire Rich Inner Circle. Uh, just different time frames for traders. And the M3 Active Trader is tomorrow, another live class. We go a little bit deeper, a little bit longer, and look, uh, give coin recommendations. You can read about that here. Also, real-time access to me in a signal chat on a daily basis, generally updating daily with videos and trade alerts and uh, updates.
And you also get access to those uh, indicators that I told you about. They're called all the major market turns, as you can see here. It's all on that page. So, um, and some other bonuses like uh, high probability uh, trade patterns and candlestick patterns, DCA worksheets, et cetera. So you can learn all about that uh, at moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, want to get back to the charts here and uh, we'll come back to this and certainly come into the news. Let's see. Uh, yeah, look at this. Wow, 670 million in liquidations. Guys, I hate to, you know, I'm I, uh, not here to blow my own horn, but I called it exactly. I said that Monday, I think we'll pump up, we'll liquidate the shorts uh, or the longs, and then we'll we'll see the markets dump on Tuesday and liquidate the shorts. And sure enough, that's what we're seeing here. So Bitcoin plummeting back to 65,000. Let me just move this over for the recording here. Uh, actually, you can't see the whole screen now. Um, but anyway, 670 million in liquidations, crazy. Uh, and uh, 388 million in longs, 286 million in shorts. So there you go, according to CoinGlass. Now we were just on CoinGlass, so why? Is it saying something different? It's, um, yeah, well, no, 729 million is what we have. So that article was uh, delayed. We're now at almost just over $700 million in liquidations. And, and, you know, guys, that is a lot of hopes and dreams just been erased. So this is why we don't teach leverage trading and uh, these degenerate day traders. Um, forgive me, I'm a recovering degenerate day trader from the old days. Uh, but at any rate, uh, dangerous stuff, tricky stuff, because the... You know, these the market makers and the exchanges, they can see all of the liquidation levels. Can they move price to liquidate traders? Yes, and they do it all the time. And uh, where, you know, there's, let's not go down the rabbit hole, but, uh, you know, there's efficiencies in the markets, but you'll often see slight variances in price on different exchanges, you know, because they're gunning for stop losses and liquidation levels. And, uh, you know, there is, uh, there's probably more in there that we won't know as far as whale coordination exchanges trying to, that's how they make their money, everybody, you know, liquidating traders and, uh, and also the exchange fees. At any rate, um, I'll take off my conspiracy hat. There's some truth to everything. I uh, won't go down the rabbit hole there. Uh, let's see. I want to look at um, a couple things. We'll get into the news in a minute. This is another trading view study that I did on the pie cycle top. So, you know, we are still seeing this nice upswing, but, uh, you know, the, the pie cycle top, we will have, we need some kind of recovery, but I sort of estimated it over here as a market cycle top, probably in the range of April or May of, uh, let's see, is that going to be 2024? Let's see, it doesn't go out that far, but uh, it's uh, it's extended out here. So, so the top could be 2025, you know, if we are coming up on April, of 2024 i just sort of eyeballed it visually i didn't get the date in there um but yeah the projected price 210k as i have shown on my other studies 210k to 212 by 2025 all right so we're going to keep an eye on that this i can't ma manipulate this this is in trading view as a published study so we'll see how we do as we go a couple things here i wanted to show you and the there is a study here i just pointed out too the uh, rsi on the, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to a weekly, there's a monthly time frame. We'll look at both because we are certainly overextended on the RSI. And let's look at this monthly time frame. It's just pegging this upper level almost up around 100, which is traditionally a pullback area, okay? Because we had it hit these areas in 2016, 2017, you know, and most recently the market cycle high. And so, I dare I say, are we putting in a temporary market cycle high? You know, we've seen this happen before, but this is a monthly time frame, and we've been up here for quite some time. Uh, nobody wants to hear this, but I have proposed we could be seeing a double cycle top like we saw in 2013 and 2012. Let's go to a weekly real quick on the RSI, and this is a little bit different uh, chart. Yeah, no, but see this 88 level also showing that um, it's uh, at, uh, at pullback areas, so, so pullback levels here. We've seen a pullback 2017 up in that 88 area here and here and here. So uh, certainly we're going to keep an eye on this uh, up toward the, uh, we'll just call it 99 level. 
it uh i guess technically can go over 100 but i uh, will just say 99 so so these are things i'm watching certainly getting overbought on the rsi the uh, take profit zone as well on the uh, money flow index and let's see that was stochastics rsi forgive me uh the rsi monthly haven't looked at this chart in a little while this is uh, so on the rsi itself on the uh, weekly not quite there yet on the monthly so we have a little bit more room on the um on the uh, monthly RSI here, but uh, we have another chart that already has it up around 88. So I have to kind of double check that. And uh, this is monthly and this is weekly. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. And we'll come back monthly or come back uh, later on that. So why don't we have it monthly? And uh, this should be a monthly chart. I've got a weekly one that I'll pull up in a minute. Sorry for the confusion. So the monthly shows we have some more upside. Let's take a look on, but it's true on the stochastics RSI. Stochastics RSI, very much overbought in this uh, zone. So pullback is needed here, in my opinion. Uh, we are still looking good on the money flow as far as coming up. It's a little bit delayed. Uh, money flow looks to be turning over a bit, but this is not a, unusual. We've been projecting this, predicting a March pullback. What we'd like to see is a pullback in this area going into the halving and then take off again. So uh, that's what we're looking for. And of course, the uh, MACD is still in a nice uptrend like the last cycle. So if we use this, it's almost perfectly symmetrical. You know, we've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. We had eight monthly bars, give or take, until it peaked. And we are currently at four in two. So what if two more months? What if, you know, we are in March? What if April, May? And I've been hearing some chatter about May starting to pull back in. Price can still go higher, but the MACD starting to roll over. So that's what we saw in the last cycle high, uh, last cycle rather, and one of the indicators we were watching to uh, get out. But really, our basis are the indicators that uh, we've developed here at Crypto Mastery. And um, again, um, please to go look at this. Uh, I can read about these here at CryptoMastery.org. This is our, these are our secret weapons. And including the ERI, uh, the early reversal indicator and in accidental discovery that has uh, been invaluable for us. So let's do this. Let's hop over to the news and unpack this a little bit. You know, the Bitcoin all-time high was breached. You guys already know that. Uh, epic resurgence, you know, read long liquidations, uh, full retail. If you don't understand this, having a little bit of paranoia, a little bit of paranoia has always served me well in business and in trading and, you know, have having a contrarian mindset because the game is a zero sum game. If you would like in a great audio book, I was re-listening to Trading in the Zone over the weekend, and it really talks about why it's so hard mentally to get your head right. Uh, highly recommend that you uh, go and uh, watch that and uh, read that. Question from Perry here, and it looks like I missed a couple, so uh, let me come back. Let me do some questions for you guys. Let's do these together. And let's see, uh, why did you say especially on Mondays? Yeah, you know, Mondays is when you see, Mondays and Fridays, a lot of traders won't trade because that's when there's sort of the over mm, extension of emotions and the, you know, the weekend demand and supply has just kind of, especially with Wall Street. So uh, it tends to be where the battle lines are drawn. It's a volatile day. And, uh, you know, if you're right, you can do very well, but often there are whipsaws and fake outs on Mondays and Fridays. So especially with us hitting new highs, that's why I was saying, especially Mondays. And uh, again, uh, that's exactly what happened. I was saying over the weekend, you know, our charts show us that we should pull back. But my spidey sense is telling me that we pump on Monday and then we pull it back down and we liquidate the longs and then we liquidate the shorts. Guys, that's exactly what happened. We just saw that. So be careful. Be especially careful uh, trading on news because news hitting the wires is late and they're creating exit liquidity, especially, you know, the old days and still today, CNBC. When I was a degenerate day trader 20 years ago, we had something called the Kernan effect. And Joe Kernan would come on and say, folks, when we come back from break, we're going to talk about an exciting new biotech that blah, blah, blah. And we would go in and figure out what company he was going to talk about, buy a bunch of that. And then when he came on TV and said this, we would be, they would always pump and we would sell into that. So the equivalent to that is sort of in, in crypto. There are news sources that, uh, 
you know, feed into the news wires and the coin telegraphs and daily hodls of the world pick that up. But by the time you're reading it, it's it's not current. Um, I'm gonna you know, we're gonna get to crypto panic here, which is pretty good. But um, there are expensive news wires that are getting breaking news before we are. So just keep that in mind. Don't trade on news, um, you know, trade off the charts, but have a little bit of skepticism, especially at these major market uh, levels here. And don't FOMO in uh, to, uh, you know, the the run ups uh, near all time highs, especially after we run so far. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Let me get back to where did the chat questions go? I've I've lost those here. Uh, okay. Bear with me here. I know what to do. There. Alt H in the Zoom. Finally have the hotkeys figured out, everyone. So why are you using iBit? Uh, it's not a forecasting tool, Perry. It just gives me a clearer idea of what is coming in from BlackRock. Okay. And so we can look at Bitcoin as an aggregate, but I want to see what BlackRock is doing. And also with our buy block indicator, that's showing when there's heavy buy pressure from iBit. And we know that iBit is driving this train. Okay. So if we go back to this 12 hour here, multiple buy blocks, uh, when I see sometimes I have to use a four hour chart. A lot of data being pulled here. Bear with me. Uh, it's taken a while to pull in. Yeah, so these green boxes are part of our ERI Pro. This is money flow. This is big purchases. So when you see these, this proceeds bigger moves higher. So we saw it here. We saw it here. Consolidated big buy block on the four hour pumped up. Big buy block here pumped up. Now we're seeing the first ever sell block on the iBit. So I uh, anticipate further downside on Bitcoin. Also our radar on the four hour daily, weekly, monthly, all red. When we get all red, time to get out. And I it's too early to tell. Let's just take a look at this. It's too early to tell if we start to see an actual sell signal for a deeper correction. And um, I will be relying on that on a weekly time frame. If we get a red ERI like we did here at the cycle top last time, I'm going to be letting everyone know in our M3 and uh, retire rich classes, get out. Um, you know, I was recommending take profits for the last five days into last week and starting to wonder, do they run this things all, all the way up, you know, to all time highs up to 100K? Certainly possible. Certainly possible. I think the the what to be looking for is when this dip bottoms, this will be the best time to get in, but it may be deeper or shallower than we realize not to be married to a number. I thrown out a couple numbers on the Fibonacci, but we'll be waiting specifically for our early reversal indicator. And if you don't know what that is, just uh, one of our partners is a quant engineer. I don't want you to look at this. This is the same as this with these arrows on it. Okay. Um, and we confirm the signal with our trend or our TSI, our trend strength indicator. Specifically, especially if you're seeing this for the first time, when we get an ERI early reversal indicator, like we did here, this green arrow on the weekly, the confirmation was here when the green TSI went from red to green above 20. This is our buy signal. And we're going to look at the trader success checklist here today as well. And then our third indicator, the signal line went green. So we're layering into trades when we see these. My point being, uh, currently we do not have a weekly ERI bearish. So that's comforting if we see one. And this has to do with price movements within a certain time frame. There's a Keltner channel in here. Uh, you know, this is the, the actual indicator. If I pull it up here, you know, I'm talking specifically to advanced traders who are sitting there saying, hey, that's cute. You've got green and red arrows. No, we, we those are to make it easier to read. Uh, there's quite a bit uh, of, of stuff going on here behind the scenes. Okay, so this is peeled behind the curtain. The green and red arrows is uh, the indicator that uh, we use for early reversals, hence the name. We don't see one yet on the weekly. Uh, the daily, we I was starting to see one that hasn't started yet, so I don't think it's going to be necessarily a deeper correction just yet, uh, but but that's why you're going to want to have these. Um, guys, not here to sell you anything. I'm here to give you the tools to succeed and win in this market, and uh, for sure, these are the backbone of everything we do here. And uh, there are some other ones as well, including the average true range. You know, we have our multi-time frame radar 
And if I pull up, I have another chart here on the average true range. Let's see there. This is also a dynamic stop loss indicator. So what you would look at if you were long is to wait for if this if the dynamic ATR right here were to go red and go exit, that would be a time to get out or take profits. And if you are out of the markets here, beautiful chance to get into the markets, right? Because right back in this area, Right, we had the dynamic ATR turn to entry level, and this was an excellent entry point. So our TSI was already green, our other indicators were already green, but that dynamic ATR is so good, both for short covering to get into the market, sell your positions, or buying in. And this was a quite a move here. Let's just do a uh, a an analysis from the entry point all the way up on the weekly time frame, fifty percent move on Bitcoin just with that dynamic ATR indicator. Uh, again, CryptoMastery.org. You got to have these, you guys. If you sign up today, if you're not already in M3, many of you are in our M3 programs, you have access to these. If you're not and you're new here, uh, you're going to want to have access to these indicators and you get a month free if you sign up for six months. Uh, it's $97 a month. Uh, can't beat it. Can't beat it. I know there's other indicators out there. Uh, none are as good or as simple to use as these, in my opinion. I've tried them all, tried the market ciphers. I find it terribly confusing. And uh, we've developed these to be simple and effective. All right, enough uh, commercial here. Uh, let's get to the news here. Um, and sorry, we got to talk about the questions to cover those. KS, almost three quarters of a billion liquidated in 24 hours. Let Yeah, let that sink in, you guys. I mean, it was like leading lambs to slaughter. I was not out there saying get in here. I would those of you, if you those of you in M3, go ahead and chat in the chat saying, yep, you were right. That I did say that. I think this goes higher and they blow out the longs and then they blow out the shorts. Now we're seeing that happen in real time. Let's go to the four hour real quick. And Bitcoin, uh, this is a weekly. What happened here? I know what happened. Uh, hang on, look at that split screen and then back to the four hours. So we have our one hour, one hour early reversal indicator, major sell blocks. So um, this is starting to dump and the four hour turn on the ATR still showing bullish, but uh, it is not going to be bullish on the one hour. The one hour, uh, these indicators are, are fractal. They work in all time frames. So I'll put that on the uh, one hour here. And yeah, see the one hour just went exit, exit uh, there. And so all the signs were here, you guys, bearish early reversal indicator on the three candles ago, punched up to the upper Bollinger Band, early reversal indicator, dynamic average true range flipped exits. We're getting red cell blocks. Bitcoin's going lower, you guys. Uh, so now, you know, long-term holders don't panic too much uh, on the Bollinger Band. It's a little oversold. I think we'll probably get a bit of a bounce on the one hour, you know. So point is, be very careful here. We don't know what what kind of a move can happen. And so uh, it, it's, uh, but my uh, contention is we'll test, we'll retest 69K one more time and fail. And then the fifth time is usually the breakout, usually. Uh, everything is on the table, though, right now with this black rocket key. As this time is different, folks, and so we have to be careful with every move. Um, 750 million is only 0.3 percent of the overall market cap. Sure, Perry, but that was in oh, that was in a day, 24 hour period. Is that significant? Hell yeah. And and but here's the thing on total market cap. Let me just show you this. We've been watching this area, and uh, I was always also in our M3 Active Trader group. I think you're in one of our groups. But uh, we, um, I said when we hit 2.45 trillion, well, that's what we'll pull back. Sure enough, sure enough. Where did we go? Just oh, we went to 2.5 trillion, and that was the pullback. Okay, that's not rocket science, you guys. Uh, that was a, a significant resistance zone back in here in 2022 and also back in this zone and, um, you know, briefly support resistance in this area. But 2.5 trillion uh, was, uh, well, sorry, 2.2 trillion was significant. And this 2.5 trillion right back here, resistance, resistance, resistance. So, you know, this made sense. We'd push up to that 2.5 trillion and pull back. So here's the thing. The dip may be short lived if it comes back down into this 2.2 trillion and that flips as support. I think that my spidey sense is that's what happens. We don't get a super deep dip. 
say that three times fast. Oh, I think we pull back into 2.2 trillion and then we shoot up in these higher ranges. And, um, you know, another huge level to watch is three trillion. That was a, that was when we hit the market cycle peak in Bitcoin. Um, when, and isn't that interesting though? Yeah, well, it's let's unpack that. It's not that it's that interesting. When we hit three trillion in market cap last cycle, that's because the alts were also flying and hitting new all time highs. Right now, a large percentage of the total market cap is Bitcoin. I can see that right down here. Total two is the total market cap without Bitcoin. That's one trillion. That means that Bitcoin is now one point three six or around one point four trillion. So Bitcoin dominance, understandably, uh, rocketing higher here and uh, did hit some kind of trouble here at the 55% level. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Uh, USDT dominance uh, kind of rising by bottoming out of a zone down here. People are, you know, taking money out of crypto, taking some profits. You know, on uh, a clue that we were hitting a local top was the meme coins were going crazy the last couple of days. People taking profits in Bitcoin and speculating in meme coins. Uh, I hate to say it, but usually that's a sign of a market top. So we're going to unpack that tomorrow too. The the double top market cycle that we saw in 2012, 2013. Certainly, you know, anything is possible as we know. Well, uh, let's see what we were talking about here. Again, the halvings and then the price running after the halvings. So this parabola is kind of that uh, how that would normally happen. Um, but this would show, and this is just a screenshot. So if we were to see this, this would be running into March 2025 as sort of the high, which is sort of in line, but we're we're pushing higher first, you know, the, uh, over here having, and then price, this is a right translated cycle. And a left translated cycle is where the prices go up ahead of the peaks and the halvings. So, so this is uh, just a rough estimation of that. Okay. All right, let's get back to the news here, you guys. I want to make sure we are following everything that we want to be following. And the chats here, and supply, you guys are chatty today, good. Uh, Bitcoin high after having having actually matters, we covered that, reduces supply. Well, yeah, so so that is certainly true, and Corey, thanks for pointing that out. Um, yeah, the effect will never be zero. The uh, chart for that that we, we uh, normally unpack in detail, um, it's this one, the 10 factors... Let's talk about this for a minute because this is actually playing out, you guys. I When I drew this, I was like, I wonder if this can happen. Uh, and then it started to kind of go against us. And now it does look like this is playing out. 10 factors to 100K and 155K Bitcoin in, the, in 2024. And we'll talk about my 210K prediction. Let's call it a forecast. Uh, nobody can tell the future. And... Um, so potential path, BlackRock Fidelity money flow. Certainly we're seeing that happen. Bank term funding program uh, ending. I think that so uh, will sort of spook the market a little bit. And then we start seeing QE printing, money printing. That will certainly boost the markets. It'll boost the economy and it'll help the uh, Biden regime stay uh, in business. And uh, and not going to get into politics. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's what I would expect. De-dollarization, you know, we... The BRICS nations, I saw a headline in the news, it's quiet, quietly still percolating uh, that the OPEC, I think it's China, Russia, they're, the uh, OPEC uh, is, is up to their old tricks. And so you know, it's only a matter of time to point you towards dollar supplies, less demand for dollars, because the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, are going to be using less dollars for energy and less demand, more supply. Um, hyperinflation, we'll see. We have corporate accumulation, micro strategy, of course. I suspect Apple, Tesla, and others are secretly buying or will be soon. Country adoption, the post having reduced Bitcoin miner selling. That's what you guys are talking about. Excuse me, 50% less available Bitcoin after the having by nature. So that's really. A huge factor we have to keep in mind. Currently, they're selling $12 billion a year, the miners are, to stay in business, keep the lights on, energy, mining rigs. Uh, you know, they don't just go in with a stack of Bitcoin to buy these mining rigs. They are financing them, most cases. And they're not cheap. They're $30,000, $40,000 for these ASIC machines. I uh, was able to go and walk in a few of them at the last Bitcoin conference. By the way, if you haven't already bought your ticket, go uh, go buy a ticket for the next Bitcoin conference. It's going to be in Nashville. 
Mike and I will be there. And no, I don't have a special link for you. Just uh, I would suggest going to this. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and um, but yeah, these miners, um, they have to they have to sell Bitcoin. So they and they're going to have half as many available to mine. And currently the ETFs are gobbling up everything that's available. So that is going to certainly contribute to higher prices. It has to. So less available on the exchange, more and more people taking crypto off the exchanges on the cold storage, all the leading leading toward a, you know, possibly explosive demand surge. And the other factors we don't really get into at this point. But let me move this out of the way. Again, this blue pattern here is the exact overlay of the prior cycle. And if I move it out of the way, you can see that it is tracking almost exactly. We had a little bit of a dip and then we shot straight up and we're pausing at the old cycle high. It's remarkable. I don't tell me if you've seen anyone else doing this. I don't think so. It's remarkable how closely this is tracking. And let me just do a uh, undo here. I wanted to put it back, but see that pull back, push up. If it does track further, right? I have it uh, drawn just like I had it perfectly before, you guys. Uh, and I kind of jiggered this here. So basically brief pullback at the old high, which we'll see, I think. And uh, and then I think we shoot straight up to 100,000. I think that's the play here. I think we blow right up to 100K leave everyone else waiting for that pullback and and uh, and then FOMOing in right near the top. And that's when the whales and institutions and BlackRock and whoever starts selling at 100K. 100K big round numbers, you guys, is going to be a big sell field day. And they might likely sell it off to retest 70K as new support. And then we push up here and meander a bit, run out of steam. But I think by November, we could hit 155K. Uh, and we saw that uh, a bit of that over here um, on the last cycle. And then we pushed up to 3.618 on the Fibonacci. That would be 210K. So uh, I think that's certainly possible as well. Okay. All right. Back to the chat here. What do you guys think? Uh, thank you, Alex. And uh, let's see, Corey's saying, I did call it all week. Yep, Susie, thank you. So these are M3 students, you guys. Uh, and uh, Mary, thank you. So um, get, get involved. Now is the time to join us in M3 Active Trader. We're nailing these markets, you guys. Have been since July of 2021, when our early reversal indicator fired and we were hammering to get in the markets early, all of 2021. And you can read more about this. Uh, so this is our highest level training. The picture of me showing, I do trade, by the way, as you guys can see. And uh, some uh, pictures here. Here's me at the Bitcoin conference with my boy, Jay Powell. Uh, the cutout anyway. And uh, uh, hopefully you guys will join us next year. I want to, I'd like to meet some more of you uh, in person. So um, there's some of you guys in your hats. All right, cool. Um, where were we? Back to... Questions. I'm going to come back to questions here, but uh, make sure to look at these. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm seeing. Uh, right. Let me get caught up on this blurry bad. Rel I'm sorry, you guys. I'm just seeing this. I don't know what happened there. I might have been because I was uh, on the I was on my other side machine here and um, which is now frozen here and totally stalled out. OK, interesting. So uh, I will keep an eye on this. Overlapping blue copy price action. Okay, good. News time. Bitcoin price breaks all time. High and epic resurgence. Uh, we already know that here. And so we've already unpacked that. Trader turns 310 into 4.1 million being early into Solana meme coin dog whiff hat. Didn't hear about this. My favorite Solana meme coin, however... If you haven't heard about Brett coin, <laughs> not good. Don't go buy it. You probably go to zero. Uh, it did 3x uh, on me the other day, but uh, it's got, it's kind of a cool project and is sort of like Pepe coin. I don't know. Um, it's worth a few hundred dollar investment, actually, you guys. And uh, you can get it on Phantom Wallet. Uh, trade your solve for Brett token. This one I haven't heard about. $310 into 4.1 million being early into. That's the thing, though, getting in early on these. You know, the the reality is clearly this paid off for this person, but these DGENs that are in meme coins, they're buying $300 of all of them. Uh, if you think you can go put $300 in a random meme coin and hit $4 million, uh, good luck. 
So let's not talk about that. Uh, Ethereum rivals ecosystem will see massive meme coin rallies, says Crypto Trader. Uh, let's see. Well, it's hopefully that this is the Solana ecosystem. Let's see. Uh, we'll open that up. I would like to know. I've got a bunch of uh, other Solana NFTs. Uh, the How many of you guys still have your Decentralians that we were part of the Mint back in 2021? Yeah, we'll never know. Uh, you never know what could happen. Analyst predicts craziest leg up for altcoins, says one class crypto access. That's interesting. Let's look at that. Any Bitcoin pullbacks will be a gift. Yes, and um, we're going to be watching that very closely. Be ready, you guys. Time to uh, sell the extra car and uh, cut your expenses. Have the kids mowing the lawns and generating income to buy the dip. BTC enters pair new paradigms, says top analyst. And let's take a look at that. Meme coins, another subsector offering best plays. Yeah, I mean, just be careful with these meme coins. They will run and dump in no time. Uh, let's see. Insider trading, secondary market sales, securities transactions. Not going to get into that. Crypto, crypto strategist, Bitcoin, amidst the monster rally, unveils bull market target. I bet you they're the ones I've already been saying for months. Willy Woo says Bitcoin to break 125K. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's a... Before end of 2025, that's that's a pretty middle of the road estimation. Uh, Willie's a smart guy, been around a long time. I think he's uh, being too conservative here. And UK authorities, FTX opens uh, Tether recovery. She you know, blah, blah. Um, yeah, these meme coins have gone absolutely bananas. Um, all right, well, uh, now I'm curious. Now I want to see. What's going on with uh, bread token? So I'm going to pull that up here just while we are looking at the other news. And if I think it looks good, I might I might suggest it. But I pro most likely it's selling off here. These things tend to do that. Uh, well, that's an interesting chart for sure. <laughs> okay. Well, just for fun and keep things interesting. Uh, this is the uh, this is the. Hang on a sec. I'll just do it this way. And this is the chart for Brett Token. I'm certain I'm not recommending this, you guys. This is just for context. And this window went way all the way up in here. So I have to resize this. Uh, but yesterday, the last couple of days, I want to show you how volatile these things are. And um, we did a little, little video on how to get a hold of it. But it's 0 0.002386. Uh, I had bought it and uh, it went down. And I was just going to let it ride. That's why you never know with these things. And where is the, all right, I got to open this up, you guys. So it comes up here for the time frame. It is on the daily. So basically on the daily, if I zoom all the way out, I had bought it in here. It went all the way down here, sideways, sideways. And then it pumped in the last few days. And then it promptly sold off. It was up here about 6X what I paid for it. And uh, and now I'm not sure what to make of this candle here. Well, it's it spiked all the way up here again to that 0. 0.6 and sold right all the way back down. This is how volatile these things are. So if I go to a 15 minute, uh, look at that thing just uh, all over the place. That might have been a bad data wick. I think it was. Okay. Uh, never mind, you guys. Um, I just thought it was kind of fun. Fun little token. And let's get back to the news. Maybe I'll pull it up for you in the uh, Discord. So what do we have here? Which ecosystem is are they talking about in this Widely predicting rival ecosystem, AVAX. That's interesting. So the analyst, pseudonymously known as Kaleo, um, so has a bit of followers there. Avalanche, good project. Don't want to deal with Amazon. And But, you know, look, uh, a lot of these are sort of advertorials. I also always look for these press releases generally have some hmm, intention that benefits the author. Not always. But uh, AVAX, good project. Let's see, um, this person calling for Pepe to really take off when it gets into price discovery. That's a whole lot of open air. I would disagree with that. I think Pepe is going to come down and then bounce up, but one to watch. We were watching it. We took our eyes off it for just a minute and look what happened. Uh, so uh, please don't go out and, uh, and buy these uh, meme coins unless you have some risk capital that you don't need. And let's see, we talked about that already, opened it twice. Any Bitcoin pullbacks will be a gift. Bitcoin enters new paradigm. Top analyst, hmm, not familiar with that person. So let's see, with meme coins going up insanely, I think we're going to get a frothy and quick. 
to get frothy quick. And I think it's going to easily lead to quite a sizable pullback. Yes, guys. Um, when you see the altcoins and pardon my French, the shit coins going crazy and the meme coins going crazy, typically you're we're near a market top. Uh, so be aware of this. Always have stop losses and, uh, and just there's no, you know, my narrative might be wrong. Um, and, but I, I'm going to stick with it, but, uh, in the longer term, we're in a good, good range. I just, uh, these things can, markets can change on a dime as we know. So, uh, we want to be aware of these signals and just kind of have it parked in the back of our head. Uh, you know, the pullback here, if we get one, hopefully I think it'll be faster and sh more shallow than people are ready for. Uh, but we'll see. Okay. Um, what do I know? I've been, been right a lot, but nobody's right all the time. Everybody. Let's see. Bitcoin has got an entirely new investor base and they are actually investors. So that's from the ETF. So that's also true. And, um, you know, I, I commented recently that I was watching an interview with Kathy Wood and her partner who runs their ETF. And she said that most people are have no idea what happens when institutional ETF money comes in. And we're talking three zeros, trillions of dollars. And that could 10x Bitcoin, we could see 600,000, five or 600,000 in the next few years. So hard to say in the near term, but the longer mid to longer term looks very good. I'm not worried because I'd be happy if this thing pulls back a little so we could buy some more. Let me turn on my uh, cursor and uh, let's see uh, Dogecoin. Not going to talk about Dogecoin. And here, but this is what I was saying. The problem is it just might not pull back and then I'm out of luck. So this is why it's prudent to be somewhat in the market. Um, I'm mostly out because I don't mind buying higher into strength, but I'm looking at altcoins now. Bitcoin, I think it uh, it needs a breather, you guys. Froth levels are high. Uh, Bitcoin resistance. By the way, the uh, fear and greed index is at 90. Let's pull that up a minute. I was just uh, looking at that here earlier today and on our Moonstream, actually our... I'll just do that. Actually, I heard Facebook was down today. Did you guys hear that? I'm going to pull up our um, Moonstream uh, group. And because Mike pa uh, posted on this, the fear and greed was at, uh, was that, where did he put that? Oh, that might've been in our retire rich chat. Uh, so let me just go find that real quick. All right. Might be faster there. And, uh, so yeah, Mike coming on the pullback, commenting on the pullback. So yeah, let's look at this. Here we go. The fear and greed index. Look at this, you guys. At 90. That is that is too, that is higher than we want to see. Yeah, this is usually where things pull back. Okay. So um, yeah, so we want to be really careful of that. Now my computer's kind of stuck here. What happened? Uh you guys can still see me, yes. Uh, I lost it. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, good. Uh, where's the chat? Yes. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Facebook and Instagram was like global outage today. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, what's going on in this world? So, um, I think if we go down, if we get a gift of a larger pullback, that's the one that you want to be buying in those entries. Yeah, I've been saying that for a while. The next pullback will be epic, an epic point to get in. Get your ducks in a row. If you need to move money around, now's the time to do it. Not financial advice, but I am doing that. My family is doing that. We are, I think, a lot of people doing that. But here's the thing. Everybody is talking about the pullback and waiting for the pullback. That is scary in and of itself because the masses are always wrong. 2021, we all thought Bitcoin, 100,000, we're going higher. We didn't get there. If everyone's waiting for this pullback, the whales and the people, powers that be, they will run this thing up knowing that FOMO will catch up and be buying all the way up into 100,000. And that's their exit liquidity. That's where the big funds institutions in the Wyckoff pattern will be likely selling. So just be aware of that, you guys. Be ready to, I would have some money in these markets. Um, you know, if you're in Bitcoin, uh, taking some profits, I think is prudent, but not all. ETH, I think, pushes to 4K, and then I take profits. Uh, I'm not touching my IRA. I'm talking about trading funds. So 
But, uh, you know, uh, we'll raise to be seeing what happens. So um, this is, article came out right before the all time high. All right, let's keep moving. How are we doing on time, you guys? I think probably getting uh, into just over an hour, so we can speed things up a bit. Top crypto strategist says Bitcoin in midst of monster rally. Uh, hey, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, um, we were going to stream live today and wasn't able to get it. YouTube wouldn't let me. I just requested st uh, streaming. Um, but if you're watching the replay, uh, please hit like and subscribe. That way you'll get alerted. Click that bell indication. That way you get alerted every time we post something new or posting a lot of new things, including snippets from our classes, our paid classes. So you can get little snippets from those if you do that. Okay, thanks. Uh, let's see. Crypto analysts actually call the bottom of the 2018 bear market believes Bitcoin has more room to run. Uh, so that's good to know. I would agree. And let's see. Although 2018, different market. Uh, I called the bottom in the 2021 market. Uh, December of 2022, we were getting people in the markets at 16.5. So that was good. And uh, it did pretty well. Let's see. Uh, he's saying, I think, ultimately between 100,000 and 130,000. Probably a good target. Uh, so he's one of these Elliott waivers, a five wave rise from the bear market. Look, this guy, this time is different. Um, if he's only calling for 120,000, um, I don't, I don't know. I think we go 155K. But I, I also wear my own confirmation bias. We'll be watching our signals, which have been dead on. So let's see. Each cycle sees lower multiples. Also true. But uh, he's saying crazy targets thrown out like 200,000. Um, I don't know why he thinks that's crazy, but uh, it's all it is true that we can't re really rely on a 3.618 extension just because last cycle did that. But if we get to the 2.618, again, that's 155K. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm comfortable with that number. I think, though, with ETF money, three zeros, we can certainly. Go all the way up here. Oh, my window's out <laughs> to uh, higher up to 210K. Possible. Uh, I'm not saying it does, but uh, we our indicators will, will tell us to get out. But I think it's possible. I'll be holding on for those higher numbers. Willie Wu says Bitcoin to break 125,000 minimum before 2025. I agree. As full demand is unleashed, here's what he means. And let's just make sure we can highlight some of this. He says on chain analyst Willie Wu could hit 125K minimum. Yeah, this year, I believe, I agree with that. This year, I'm, you know, 125K, 155K. Uh, he has a million followers. That's awesome. Uh, he's a good guy. He's been around forever. And uh, so, yeah, there's exactly what I was saying. Before the end of 2025, from BlackRock and Fidelity, the two biggest players. And, uh, you know, they... Um, and here's the thing. If they rotate 3% exposure to Bitcoin, um, we were hearing, my business partner just said, and I have a, a source... That says that they were a, a, a contact, I can't say who, was in the BlackRock investor meeting and they're suggesting up to a 20% allocation to Bitcoin and they may be pulling money from another fund to add in. So this is this could get a lot bigger than people realize. Okay. And nobody wants to be late to the party, including especially BlackRock. I, I think that's the read. Max Payne is much higher. Those of you who know my spidey senses say that we go higher than people realize, and uh, and that's that's what I'm I'm feeling. At some point, unexpected pullbacks we have to see, but but we'll see uh, what happens. And this is saying their most optimistic portfolio allocation recommendations. Uh, BlackRock saying uh, nine trillion. Oh, okay, so eighty four percent. Not sure what that what that means. Is that the total? Uh, well, this is I don't know what 84% means. If Fidelity 4.2 trillion, just ignore those uh, percentage numbers. I don't know what they mean. Um, but uh, let's see, maybe that's the percentage of the entire allocation to the fund, but it's uh, it seems skewed. So, um, this is an article maybe looked look at later. Conservative is it's only three 13 trillion of global wealth accounted for. Let's see, uh, yeah, for considering. Fidelity and BlackRock's assets are only a small portion of the available global wealth. Very conservative as it's only 13 trillion of global wealth when there's 500 trillion out there. I haven't heard that number before. Uh, and um, 500 trillion 
would have to include every source, like everything, real estate, sovereign wealth funds, gold, silver, real estate, uh, you know, um, risk on assets, 500 trillion. Uh, you know, we were previously using like a $20 trillion number, which was gold, silver, and um, other risk on assets offshore. But uh, anyway, that, that's a pretty big number. So, um, yeah, let's keep an eye on all that. Obviously, Bitcoin price hits new all-time high with support from the Bitcoin ETFs. We've already talked about this. Anything else new to unpack here? Not so much. A lot of these uh, news articles are, um, you know, designed for clickbait. You can see the fancy graphics. Uh, something on Do Kwan founder wins appeal against UX extradition. Too bad he could share a cell with Sam who I heard is uh, looking for a shorter sentence. Poor Sam. Let's all let's all shed a tear for Sam Bankman-Fried. Okay, smallest violin in the world. There we go. Too bad, Sam. Um, yeah, you deserve it. Rare CryptoPunk sells for... Okay, not going to get into that. I'm just... You know, this also indicates a frothy market if CryptoPunks are going for $16 million. Let's see, BRICS new payment protocol will be built on the blockchain. That's interesting because it ties into the uh, BRICS. I want to keep an eye on that story. It's smoldering. It's another smoldering campfire that could ignite the arrest of these other ish, uh, areas that we talked about. Uh, let's see, crypto punk NFT 16 million signaling market revival. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That seems awfully uh, frothy to me. But there's not a whole lot of other news in here, which is surprising. Bitcoin reaches new U.S. high from top to bottom and back in 846 days. Cardano has been moving up, interestingly. And I don't, I'm not a Cardano bull, but I, I like the chart on it. So we can have a look at Cardano too. And if there's anything else, one of the things we're going to do is the uh, hot movers. Let's see a bunch of things here. Grayscale announced an established new fund. Uh, not seeing a whole lot in the news, you know, seeing some meme news. And and uh, Bitcoin price correct 7% after Bitcoin sets first pre-having all-time high. So let's look at that as well, and then we'll move on. All right, we're kind of newsed out here, but uh, any questions, you guys? All right, let me catch up. Um, the name of our Moonstream, yeah, the YouTube channel is Moonstream. We just rebranded it. If you'd like to find us on the, let me just move this over here, YouTube. It's going to be Moonstream on YouTube. And thanks for asking. So if you do that and looky there, I'll just uh, click this there. So the uh, stream, the you guys can see that as well. And uh, wait a minute, I don't think that's us. Is there another Moonstream? Uh, okay, did not realize that. Well, Moonstream Crypto, if you look for. And yeah, there it is. Okay, so this one here, Moonstream Crypto. There, that one. Okay, and so here we go. We need to get our logo in there. My read, I thought we had our logo in there. Videos and shorts. Um, wait a minute. Something's awry here. Um, these are the videos I was wondering where they went. We've got a ton of stuff on there. This is not the right channel. So we apparently have, might have two channels because I have uh, some videos going somewhere that I didn't know where they were going. All right, we need to unpack that a bit because... Uh, let's see, <laughs> it's embarrassing. So, um, yeah, here it is. So there are two channels, apparently. We need to firm those into one. This is the one that it should be with this little rocket here. Um, and Myrene, if you're paying attention, I need to have access to this other one here so we can combine those. I think that's where the uh, some of our clips are going. But anyway, you look for the blue rocket and there you go. You can go to the videos. Here, you'll see previous classes like this one. You can see some shorts. And I'm also doing some trading view updates that are updating here. But at least that mystery is solved. I was uploading videos a couple over the weekend and not seeing them in the shorts here and because they're going to a different channel. Uh, all right. And you can see some cool videos here. We're building with AI, kind of fun, short, quirky uh, videos there that you'll enjoy. Okay, so uh, that's that, uh, everybody. Let's see any more chat here. So that's uh, Moonstream Crypto is the name of the chat. I'll put the link in here for you guys as well. On YouTube. And uh, here's the direct link, so there's no confusion. 
and yeah, at moonstream.crypto. How about that? Uh, YouTube getting Facebooked. Not sure what you mean, Corey. Uh, can't log into YouTube and switch accounts at all. Getting as YouTube being glitchy. Okay, Corey, good to know. Corey's on our team, by the way, for you guys. Uh, if you guys want to say hi to Corey, uh, he's helping us with some of the videos and cutting up these videos. So, um, Perry, I'll talk about that. So, let's see. You want to get caught up? The link. Uh, you guys have been chatting about this here. Uh, something about a virus. Uh, yeah, no. Instagram, Facebook was down. Whether if you have a virus or not, I don't can't tell you. Tony, you might have to uh, run your antivirus. But uh, good idea to do that. Always use a VPN, you guys. By the way, always, always double check. Let me make sure mine is on. It is on. Uh, NordVPN, pretty good. All right, a link will take you to a Moonstream Crypto YouTube page. Ask if you want to subscribe. Okay, Corey, thanks. And uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That is the correct one. I'll double check that. And But we apparently have a mystery YouTube we may have set up separately. Uh, so a uh, rumor is Vanguard has been losing accounts because, yeah, they're not letting people sign up. People are calling Vanguard saying, I want to sign up for the ETF. They're saying we're not allowing it yet. So um, thanks for letting me know. Okay, yes. Um, rumors Vanguard has been losing accounts because they refuse to allow their customers to trade crypto ETFs. Uh, genius. Now the CEO has announced impending retirement. <laughs> oh, geez. So the hedge funds that have been sitting on the sidelines are facing increasing market pressure to soften their stance, aka put money in and join the party. Musical chairs, everybody. No one wants to be late to the party. Fashionably late is not good in crypto. So you have given up, uh, Perry says, given up on the 5.3 theory. Um, you know, that was not my theory. That was, I had uh, heard somebody else talk about it. And um, I'm going to keep it parked in my mind. Uh, I uh, wasn't saying that would happen. I thought I said it was interesting. I've been uh, going with this. I've had this scenario on for months now and from far before I saw that little 5.3 thing. So this to me makes more sense to only get to 80K. Now this candle though should show an 80K uh, sort of um, short-term limit and then somewhere in there retesting the 67, 68 high and then going to 100 uh, and potentially in a month, that would be in April, potentially. I'm not saying this plays out. You know, we're some downward pressure into this zone for a few months and then really taking off again in June. It, it's a bit of a moving target. It does not have to happen, you know. But uh, the 5.3, the 80K, I think it could be a short-term top, but I don't think it's the top. Not with the ETFs. Uh, I know the. it was interesting analysis. Reserve the right to be wrong, but I just don't see how 80K is going to be the top here. Uh, and um, there's no reason for that. And there's really, you know, the the buy pressure's there to get to 100, if not 155. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So let's see, it didn't mean it was your theory. No, no worries. Yeah, so uh, always have, you know, always be open to different theories. I mean, I would say take some profits around 80 if it starts weakening based on that, because, you know, there's enough people watching it, they might sell off there too and try shorting it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that was before the ETFs were approved. Exactly. Uh, let's see. Anything else, you guys? Uh, the four years old representation of global market caps. Uh, yes. And for derivatives, national value. Okay. Dual derivatives, 500 trillion. Well, that's true. And that's a fair point, uh, Perry. You know, um, we will see more derivatives playing a part in these markets now that it's a Wall Street uh, product. Uh, so expect weekends to be quieter. You'll see uh, pumps on the lighter volume altcoins over weekends, but you're not going to see huge movement on Bitcoin. And, um, you know, Ethereum is right in line for an ETF as well. So it's going to be fortunately quiet things down on the weekends, I think. Uh, you know, the big money is, is in the institutions. And uh, so they don't work on the weekends uh, or in August when they're in the Hamptons and they're there are sunny uh, beach chairs sipping uh, uh, my ties and all that on vacation. Uh, okay, visual capital. So we can look at this link here, copy link. Let's see. Good place to monitor widely impacted services. Down detector, sure. Got it. Uh, good to know. What do you think about UK action about crypto daily hodl? It might leak over. I didn't see that. Um, I, I skipped over. I saw that headline, Tony. We can um, revisit it. And, huh. Okay, well, I didn't realize there was mass outages. 
all over. Let's uh, have a looky there on that. Uh, where did that go? Okay, down detector. Haven't heard of that before. So Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, Honeywell. You know, that almost seems like a, a solar flare knocked out a bunch of satellites. I can't imagine. I know AT&T had issues recently. But uh, Twitter, T-Mobile. Huh. All right. Well, what are you going to do? Good to know, but what are you going to do? Maybe that's why I was having some internet issues there a minute ago. Uh, let's see. What are we looking at here? I'm going down a bit of a rabbit hole. Military sending crypto 40s. What, uh, this kind of makes my eyes hurt. Whoever sent this over. Silver cryptocurrency. Um, let's not let's not dive into this right now. I'm sorry. I want to get to some other things. Um, we The goal, uh, daily huddle. Uh, somebody asked about the uh, UK. Uh, here, UK authorities will power the crypto. I assume this is the article you mean. To confiscate crypto assets from the public by the end of April. Wow. Maybe we should have read that a little bit. Uh, UK government just released documentation that... Uh, here, forgive me. You know what I'm going to do here? I want to do something a little differently So on some of these. And this is for... Whoops. Uh, I did not mean to highlight all of it. Okay, let's look at this again. Okay, the UK government just released documentation notifying that the country's law enforcement will soon have power to seize crypto assets and without going through extensive legal processes. Okay, past October 26, 2023, comes extensive provisions relating, relating to crypto assets, including authorities may seize or handle a right, said that already, um, but without cause. I mean, certainly they would have to have cause to realize crypto assets all uh, right, let's see. Administers, there's just a lot of word salad here to pay proceeds. Uh, okay, it sounds like for criminal, uh, for confiscation, I don't know. I don't see that happening here, you guys. And so, um, let's, uh, oh, I know why that thing's all the way up here. That's how it happened. But, uh, shoot, all right, let's get rid of this. It's not really playing nicely. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. My Alexa's talking to me. The world's gone crazy here today. Liquidation's now at uh, 700 million as the, yeah, the hours are ticking away. It's lowering. So, um, by the way, we didn't use our trade checklist much here today. Um, let's do something else. I want to look at the hot movers. Where did they go? Uh, we used to watch those. And I might have to dig those up again. Lots of charts here. Money of these we talk about tomorrow. Let's take a quick look at what's going on over in your know, Bitcoin down still 3600. Uh, ETH, you know, kind of holding there and um, kind of in a holding pattern. Sol, Link, just kind of holding there, hanging out. And some of these others that, uh, you know, were kind of selling off here. ICP was up nicely, so already selling off, though. Thing, always look for the end of the day close, though. Somebody in the M3 trader was like, MC, ICP is up, but it's selling off below resistance. So we want to keep an eye on those that sell off uh, after they uh, they get a bit of a pump there. And let's take a quick look at DXY because we'll look at that more tomorrow. But, you know, DXY could go either way here. And, uh, you know, total market cap pulling back as well. So we've got Phantom Coin looking a little bit strength, but still in a resistance area. I sold Phantom right up in this range. I think we do get a pullback there. I also sold Filecoin right in this order block, sell order block here. So I'm mostly uh, in cash. I did buy some. Um, I am optimistic on optimism. Breaking into new local highs, not financial advice, just saying. Uh, you know, it's kind of up in this price discovery zone area. I think this may not be full price discovery because uh, it may have gone back further. But local top breaking up. If it can close above $4, I like it. Blue, horse, blue Horseshoe like Santa Cot Steel. If you remember, extra credit, what movie is that from? Wall Street, of course. Uh, okay, so let's do this. I want to get to the, um, uh, what is it? The um, trading view. Hot movers. Sometimes we find some gems in here. And uh, let's see. Uh, I forgot to say crypto. 
Okay, and crypto gainers today. So you can just Google that. And uh, let's do this. I guess we can, what's going to be best here? We'll kind of do it like this. All right, so what do we have on this? Uh, GST, uh, not familiar. Doge Killer, I'm not familiar. I, I'm going to stick with, I want to stick with some that have the market cap in at least, uh, you know, 20, 30 million. I, I like to see that. Luna is moving. That's interesting. Uh, Luna Classic was even kind of moving around a bit recently. So let's take a look at this on the uh, super charts. So the to open this up here it's going to make me open it up this way isn't it yeah super charts okay so uh let's have a look at this uh, on luna us dollar and see what's going on there i'm not a proponent of luna obviously it's kind of a dead project uh it, it may rise again here's what i would do i'd put an alert at two dollars fifty see if it can get back above there and i will see I'll let uh, let the chart tell you everything you need to know and um but let's uh kind of move on so have an alert on that don't need more so i just want to skim through this see if we recognize any theta network uh looking good apparently and starknet token possibly we'll have a look at let's look at theta probably the better play here so we'll go and look at it on the uh super charts and yeah theta looks pretty good uh, this is a weekly chart here now why i don't know okay i've got this bitcoin having on there let's get rid of this weekly chart on theta uh now for some reason it's opening up my monthly bitcoin chart and i don't want that so what uh, i'm going to do there this thing is so certainly temperamental sometimes uh let's um i'll, I'll open it up and um let's see i'm going to load a different chart and just do like a, a daily chart, trading daily chart. Okay, right there. And we're going to do this. Top crypto gainers. I think this is what I need to do. And trading daily over here, right That We'll do this. And there we go. Okay, you have to move things around a bit sometimes. All right, so uh, here we have it. And if we go back in here and we want to look at, uh, what do we say, Luna, we looked at uh, BTC. Anything you guys want to look at? Theta we looked at and uh, StarkNet Token. Maybe look at this one. Hopefully it'll give us the uh, right chart on the super chart. Okay, that is not what I thought it was. So that's not one we want to look at. What about you guys? You want to see anything in particular? Why don't we look at, uh, well, here's optimism. Looking good on the daily chart. Look at that beautiful chart. Just sort of, you know, it's kind of like a, now, I, not really a flag. It's sort of an ascending wedge, but uh, this thing breaking up, I, I like that chart a lot. So, you know, we want to be a little careful. If Bitcoin sells off hard, and everything else may sell off hard. But uh, that's what I'm looking at. Let's see, what do you guys want to do here? In America, we got some other chats. Down detector, yes. Uh, comments on pre precious metals, uh, no comment. I don't follow precious metals. Although it's interesting, Kiyosaki is no longer talking about gold. He's talking about silver and crypto. Uh, and um, yeah, so I think that's probably the enough said in the narratives changing and uh, people are pointing into crypto, digital gold. Uh, okay, just as you said, all right. Great minds think alike, Kiyosaki. Uh, KS, I just saw this. He no longer, right. Maybe I subconsciously saw that, but I think you made that comment uh, in M3 Active Trader. So, um, yeah, so that's good. Good to hear. So Alex says in America, they will have to take our guns first for, before taking our crypto. All right. You're, you're in California, Alex. Uh, you're not uh, allowed to have one, although there is a good alternative uh, called a Birna, B-Y-R-N-A, uh, that will stop somebody non-lethal. I uh, got a couple of them here. I live in Washington, D.C. And just in case, y'all, you guys uh, can't be too careful. You and I and YFI are up and by in spite of the other, sorry, in spite of the others. So Uniswap and Urine Finance. Let's take a look at these and see what we have going on with Uniswap. I took my eye off it because it just didn't do anything, much of anything for so long. But look, look at that. Uh, Uniswap is... It's looking good here. Let's see. Finally, 
So what this blue candle means is a reversal uh, on our dynamic average true range and uh, and and this pushing higher. Also, the yellow are uh, key reversal areas uh, typically. So uh, this one pushing higher on Uniswap looks pretty good. Let's look at the weekly time frame. Okay, so this is one signal uh, setup. I always like to see the 21 week crossing the 50 week. Excellent buy signal. Maybe a little bit late to get in uh, on our trend indicator though, showing it have for three or four more weeks of upside. And um, by the way, uh, do uh, pay attention, get on our email list, make sure you pay attention. We're gonna do a live training Friday with some of the new indicators. Some of you guys have not seen these yet. Joe has a new Bollinger Band indicator. Uh, we have the Rocket, we have the Trend Pro, we have the uh, ERI Pro and another surprise. And so uh, for some of you, you're gonna wanna have these. So at any rate, uh, that's Uniswap and um, you know, uh, it's starting to show some promise. The only other thing I would look at here is what is the ROI if it goes back to its old high, not saying that it will, uh, but it's a 200X, you know, uh, not not maybe not the best, but if you like Uniswap, I think certainly these will have a good run. And some people saying that the DEXs, the centralized exchanges are really gonna benefit. Um, and recently, I just posted in uh, M3 Actor Trader, or maybe Retire Rich, that uh, two recommended coins for the cycle. One is DYDX. Specifically, as I've been saying, they have a monetization model. Exchanges, especially DEXs that are unlikely to get shut down, they earn money. So I would also keep an eye on exchange coins like, so KuCoin has its own coin, uh, Binance, BNB, and then uh, there's also a coin, I believe for Metis. Was it Metis or we were looking at one, Metis is going to benefit from uh, transaction speed. Actually, uh, they're not an exchange. Uh, forgive me, I'm drawing a blank on what that coin was. If you guys remember, I just talked about it recently, but uh, if any of these exchanges that earn money through exchange fees and staking, if they have their own token, that would be one to watch because venture-backed companies, profitable companies are going to be the ones that are going to survive and thrive. Uh, let's see, what was the other one that you uh, guys had mentioned here? I just drew a blank. Uh, you're in finance, all right. YFI. YFI. And uh, where is that available? You can find it on uh, Coinbase here. So this looks a little bit earlier in the trend. Okay, so your finance does look good, you guys. We have, this is what's great about these indicators. It takes all the guessing and emotion out of it. We have the 21 and the 50 about to cross here. We have, do we have an ERI? Let me just see there. We did have an early reversal indicator, hence the name. That's typically our leading indicator. So we have the arrow there. We have a confirmation with the TSI going green on the weekly time frame. We have the signal going green and we have a bell on the weekly. Okay, YFI, uh, that is certainly of interest, looks good at the breakout point on the weekly time frame. And so, yeah, that uh, everything looks good here. Radar is a little mixed on the daily, but that's good. I'd like to see it pull back closer to the 21 day or the 21 and 50 week EMAs. But we have the ERI, the four kings, you guys. ERI, TSI, Signal and Bell. This is a good example to use our trade of success checklist. And if you'd like to get access to this, just go to moonstream.io slash free checklist and you can download this. Uh, what's cool about it is we can you give you a trade score. So on the ERI going green, like we just looked at. And also we had the TSI going green and above the 20. Well, now we have two check marks that gives us a trade success score of two out of 21. And that's generally enough for me to get into a trade, the ERI TSI. And the more we can add, the better. The signal line has also gone red to green. So now we're at a three of 21, should be in this trade by now. Uh, let's put this away, that's optimism. I was looking at your in finance. So again, why? Uh, sorry, the ERI, the green, so that's number one. We have a TSI going green. At number two, the signal indicator here just gone green again. That's number three. We also have a bell on the trend indicator, which is our buy signal. And typically these run uh, six or seven days. Our take profit symbol is the bag of money right there. And then we wait for a new key and bell sequence. So with that, we have... Uh, where is the, uh, here it is. I'm going to move it, no, here, here. I'm going to move down right over here so it's close by. So here we have a bell as well. So now we have four. We also have a green midline on the TSI or the trend indicator rather. Rather, this green midline, very important. That's green. So that is another one. 
So we've got a good trade score here. Is there bullish engulfing candle pattern? I didn't see one. No, but so we won't check that. Is candle body at support? Well, it's above support, but we don't have it right at support. And so we don't check those. Is it above the 21 and 50? Yes. Okay, so there's another check mark. Now we're at six out of 21. Obviously, the more that we have, the more confidence we have in the trade is price above a rising support trend line. Uh, it, uh, where did I, did I close that window? What happened to that thing? I may have just accidentally closed that window. Sorry about that. I got click happy. I'll just go over under the history and, uh, yeah, it looks like somehow I buggered that. So here we have it back again and put that right in there. Okay. So, um, we also have a dynamic ATR is green. So, uh, we can just keep on going down these and the vol index. I haven't looked at yet. Don't have a rocket as the green buy blocks don't have the, well, we do, I think, uh, we don't have buy blocks. That's okay. We're still enough to be in this trade three inside up is another pattern. Is it all green in the radar? It's not, but the dynamic ATR is an entry zone. And uh, is it above a long-term support trend line? So I would say that it is here. And the we also have a rising trend line support. So these are somewhat subjective on these. But look at this. We have certainly enough to get into this trade. And the last one that we can check off. Let me turn off the ATR. And again, you can get this checklist for free at moonstream.io slash free checklist. Let me turn off the ERI. Uh, perfectly fine to turn these off from time to time. So the next one we can also check off, though, is that this downward trending trend line has now broken and is going up. Not very fast, but uh, it's going up. And this is where you know, we always like to find a new trend line, trend channel. Okay, and this is... Uh, so, so it's a little bit shallow, but uh, that is technically one of our breakouts here. Price breaking out of a downtrending trend channel. So, um, you know, and then also a long-term support trend line breaking above resistance trend line. Okay, so resistance trend line, that happened down in this range. So it's not really current. We'll leave that at that. But either way, you guys, 8 out of 21 is pretty good. Pretty good on the trend success checklist to get into that trade and then on the bearish side you have these bearish signals as well to know when to get out of these trades so um anyway i will just touch on the vol index because we haven't had a chance to talk about that uh this is an excellent indicator that uh is uh we we're sort of underused great on the lower time frames this is what it looks like so the vol index when it's bull bullish uh, sorry coming out of a bullish zone in the green coming down into the black usually a sign prices are headed lower, which it was. And when it's coming out of a lower region on the one hour, four hour, we can see that down in this range came out of the red zone into the black right here was a great buy signal. And that was even earlier. So it coincided with our TSI and signal, just another confirmation. This was going higher on Bitcoin. So on the trend checklist there, we would have been able to use ball index as well. Okay, so you guys can get that for free again at moonstream.io slash free checklist and uh, or on our main website. Um, guys, that's all I really wanted to have time to cover here. We're going a little bit long. And so let me just see if you have any other chats and I'll hop back over here into sort of the uh, list of coins that are moving just to see if there's anything moving. Uh, ETH BTC, now uh, to keep an eye on that because the ETH trade uh, will at some point money flow into to ETH over Bitcoin. It's kind of stagnating, not much happening there. Uh, let's see the VIX, not gonna worry about that. Phantom coin, not a whole lot happening. Optimism, I bought some last night, that's looking good. We've got ENS, that's pumping up. Burn Metaverse, I had a little bit of a pop. Uh, not seeing anything else, you guys. Uh, what about you? Uh, let's see, the way the government is malfunctioning, I wouldn't put it past them to try. Uh, Filecoin, GRT, all right, let's look at Filecoin again. I uh, just sold my Filecoin using our indicators saying, hey, this thing is topping out. And the weekly time frame, let's go to a daily here. Uh, love this project. I think it's still 100x potential. Uh, you know, and so uh, very much uh, a big fan of Filecoin. Um, 40x to the all-time highs, I believe. But uh, short term, yeah, you know, it's uh, sort of 
kind of had a bit of a run bearish ERI. I think it pulls back down into this uh, $8 range. What else was the uh, other one you wanted to look at there? GRT, not a big fan of the graph. Always lost the money on this. Back in 2021, every time I buy something, it would go it'd go down. Thing is that they don't have a monetization model. The whole story of it's the Google of the cryptoverse uh, doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, they are way early. They don't have a way to earn money. They're mapping the blockchain uh, ecosystem. Uh, do they get there? Maybe, but it's also not Sergey Brin and uh, the other guy. Um, so this is pure speculation. Be careful of the graph. I think it's a hit resistance here, likely pulling back. Bearish ERI, uh, these are both in pullback periods. I would wait for a green, a bullish ERI and TSI and signal everything's bearish on this. So, so you know, not, not the worst in the world, but I wouldn't be buying it here. So uh, with that, you guys I forgot to tell you, by the way, if you do sign up for the Moonstream M3 Active Trader, you get a cool little hat. Uh, we need, we're waiting on a, another shipment of these. Uh, and uh, apologies if you're in Australia, by the way, the, it costs $200 to send a hat down under. Uh, we need to get a printer. If any of you are down under and know of a hat maker, uh, we can have some made down there for you guys. Uh, I think that's all we have time for you guys. Let's see. Uh, I lost my guns and my crypto in an unfortunate boating accident. I can't tell if you're kidding or you're serious, uh, Corey. Um do you, how do you lose crypto in a boating accident? Uh, let's see. Berna. Yeah, to, gotcha. So yeah, they are. And there's other there's other versions of that too, other companies that make those. Why do you live in Washington, D.C.? Um, Marissa, good question. Um, my family's from here. I grew up here. I had fled to Florida in 2003. Uh, not, not fled, but moved and got married, got unmarried and moved to California. Uh, more bigger question is, uh, aren't I glad I left California? The answer is yes. Moved back to the D.C. area to be with my uh, sister and uh, aging parents during COVID. And uh, But I don't know that I'll be here for much, much longer. It's a good home base, but uh, it also gives me a good reason to uh, travel and leave town. I was just in Coronado and uh, Las Vegas for a little bit. Uh, what about ICX? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see, Siri, or Alexa keeps chatting at me here today. She's very talkative. Uh, a reminder that Alexa is always listening. Alexa, off. Crazy. I'm a, to I'm a total newbie. I want to buy Bitcoin. Where do I start? Just learning. Um, well, I mean, that's, that's uh, you can start just about anywhere. Coinbase, Gemini. Uh, what are stable coins? Yeah, that, that's a Google question, Marissa. So I would uh, Google that. And um, yeah, so we do have, if you wanted to sign up for our newsletter, we've got something called Blockchain Bottom Line, or you can find that on our website at uh, moonstream.io. And that is uh, 100 lessons on everything crypto related. Blockchain Bottom Line here. Uh, or our uh, newsletter. Those would be two excellent places to start. And uh, I don't know. I, um, I'm i always a little bit dubious when people claim to be rank beginners. Because uh, uh, So anyway, um, yeah, but a lot of information online. Uh, Michael Saylor has a free resource, hope.org. You know, truly, uh, if you are brand new, I would say uh, don't go out buying anything right now, especially if you're not... Uh, don't know what you're doing. We have come up so far. We are we are due for a pullback. Uh, and FOMO, when in doubt, stay out. Uh, you can certainly come to these Tuesday classes, and that would be a great uh, option for you. And maybe consider our retire rich class, which is not the active trader. Uh, our class tomorrow is more more active trading, not day trading, but more active trading. Whereas the retire rich coaching i'm sorry the retire rich inner circle is is this one i do some coaching um limited basis don't have a lot of time and uh typically those people are have been trading a little longer retire rich is a good one though we uh, the investment thesis is here we look for emerging markets kind of longer term plays you can read about our macro strategy and risk analysis over here and uh let's see i just kind of reposition this this is more for our kind of re recordings here so this is useful for me but it might be annoying to you guys let me just do this for a minute um why does it do that 
uh, here. Okay. So this is the retire rich, uh, the investment thesis. What are we focusing on more of buy and hold on these areas? Future of regulation, metaverse, crypto exchanges, AI and crypto, how that's melding together between metaverse, AI, and the Apple glasses, uh, NFTs as a payment form inside the metaverse. All of this is coming together. The future of DAOs, the future of crypto cities, ETFs, and uh, DPEN is something we've been talking a lot about lately. Now everyone else seems to be talking about DPEN. That stands for Decentralized Physical Infrastructure. Uh, we have some picks in that category. These uh, We do give trade alerts in the Retire Rich Inner Circle. To find out more, just email us at moonstreamvip at gmail.com. Uh, there's no sales page for that. It's kind of by application. But again, metaverse technologies, artificial intelligence, gen next generation NFTs and INFTs, ordinals and Bitcoin and SaaS and tokenization of real world assets and uh, DPIN, DeFi, Social Web 3, GameFi, TradeFi. These, these are the areas of interest. Excellent classes weekly with Mike and myself Thursday. And uh, they are some of the best uh, out there, I, I believe. Uh, so anyway, um, thanks so much, everybody. And uh, the Perry, which volatility in that indicator? The ATR, it's a, it's not the same as the free ATR in TradingView. Uh, we have our own um, dynamic ATR, which looks like this. It's similar, but it has different settings. So uh, in the Crypto Mastery indicators, you're getting our volatility index, our ERI, that early reversal indicator, you're getting our trend indicator, our trend strength indicator, uh, the radar, the signal line, and the, the dynamic ATR also can be used as your stop loss, your dynamic stop loss, or when to get into trades. Uh, this is all included in this. 97 a month, um, you get a free month when you sign up for six months. And, um, you know, just... Uh, to be fair, we got to make sure everyone's happy and compensated. The, the, the developer of these, great guy named Joe, a mad scientist in the best possible way. Basement trader, professional trader, pages of testimonials. These are the best indicators I've ever used, and we've created them to be so and simple. And this week, uh, this class is for training. Uh, let's see. So basically, uh, for um, thank you, Perry. Yeah, you know, for for more in depth analysis, we do these tomorrow in our active trader class, uh, unpacking some of the macro things that are happening. And uh, we'll go a little deeper, but uh, I do have to shut off the class here. We've run a bit long, but I want to thank everybody again for being here. And uh, we will see you guys again next week. I do expect this Bitcoin pullback to uh, continue. And uh, we start to see something along these lines before going higher. I think that's the case. But uh, everything depends on what happens in the BlackRock and ETFs. So let's see. Uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome, everybody. Okay, everyone, we'll see you next week. Thanks and sorry for the tech issues. Uh, seems to be uh, going around the world here, all kinds of tech issues. But uh, we uh, overcame and powered through. See you, everyone. Bye-bye.